Hey guys, it's Aaron. Something we create a lot when we make images for things like social or our blog are composites of SketchUp models and final renders or actual photos of products. You may have seen images like this or like this come through from SketchUp at some point in the past. And this is mostly done in post-processing, in Photoshop, that sort of thing. But the initial images do come out of SketchUp. So if you know ahead of time that you want to create something like this, the best thing to do is to create your scene that's going to go to the renderer, send that to the renderer, and then with that scene saved, you can go create line work to overlay, or uh, if you want to do a half and half image, you just export the PNG and you're good to go. If you ever have to work backwards though, if you've ever had the image of a, say, a coffee table that got made and you're trying to align it to do, do an overlay with a SketchUp model, it can be a little harder to do. I had to do this recently and thought, maybe you guys would like to see the process I went through to create this. So we're gonna look at just that right now. Okay, so I have a model right here that I want to use to composite with a render I created. So first thing I do is bring the image in, the actual render that I had. Um, so I did render this in Thea, and when I rendered it, I rendered it from a certain view that I didn't save. I didn't save it as a scene, I didn't save it as part of the model, so I had to get back to that render, the same view that the renderer used. To do that, I do have options in here for match photo or load an image, that sort of thing, but what we're gonna actually use is watermark. So in here, in my styles window, if I click on edit, I can choose the watermark icon, and I can load an image in as a watermark. I'm gonna grab the render I created, and when it first loads it in, it just throws it right in the middle of the screen and says, you know, do you wanna overlay or put it in the background of the model? Background of the model, of course, is gonna put it behind the artwork. I wanna overlay it on top, and hit next, and now I have the option of choosing how strong is the image or the background. I'm gonna actually make it a little bit paler. I wanna be able to see it, I don't want it to disappear, but I make it a little bit lighter so it's not quite as overpowering. I want to be able to see the, the model primarily. Then I'm going to hit next. And do you want to stretch it or position it? I do want to stretch it. What stretch is going to do is it's actually going to keep the aspect ratio of the image and make it as big as it can get in one axis. In this case, vertically, it's going to stop. This is a 16 by 9 render uh, aspect ratio. So I want to stretch it, not uh, make it go bigger than that, because I want my image to align to that aspect ratio. I'm going to finish. And there we go. So now what I have to do is I have to rotate this model so that it lines up with this ghosted image. And I could do this just using orbit. So my scroll, bo my scroll button, I can scroll in and out to zoom, click down on the middle button to orbit, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to click on the hand tool. So what this does right now is it gives me three tools in one. If I click the left mouse button and drag, I'm panning. If I scroll the mouse middle mouse button up and down, I'm zooming. And if I click the middle mouse button, I'm orbiting. These are the three tools I need to align. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for a point that is a very clearly defined point that I can line up with, and I'm using this upper left corner. Right here, I grab my model, and I actually did a pretty good job of not paying attention and lining it up. Um, I wanna get it lined up so that the point's right there. Now, this is where I'm gonna start from. So I could actually from here start moving this around and trying to align, but right off the bat, almost immediately, I know there's an issue because my vertical lines almost line up, but you can see my perpendicular lines are way off. Um, I'm a little off scale-wise, so here, we'll do that, and then I'll move it up here, but you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. This is the top of the wall here, but I can see the top of the wall, my render goes up like this. So immediately, I can tell, if you're a, a photographically-minded person, you're probably already calling this out, Look at the difference between the image, look at the deck that comes up here versus the deck here. I have an issue right now with my field of view. So if I come up to camera and click field of view, down here I can actually type in a field of view is different. So 35 degrees is what I'm at right now. This is obviously something that's a little bit different. So if I knew what that was, if I knew, oh yeah, when I exported this model, I was at 50 degrees, I could type that in. If not, you can click and drag until you get about where you think you're looking for. So again, I'm watching this line right here and this line right here. So as I drag, I'm pretty close there. 45 degrees might be what it was at. 
at this point, I can switch back over, grab my hand tool, move it up, and ooh, yeah, that was, that may have been it. Something close to that. If I go back into field of view, let me try typing in exactly 45 degrees. See what that does as I orbit this around, grab my hand tool, and just gonna, now I'm just gonna flip between these three, these four commands, um, orbit, zoom, and pan, to just try to line this up just exactly as I possibly can. So I'm getting close for sure. A little bit bigger, a little smaller. Ooh, getting there, I'm getting there. So this process, if this is something that you have to do a lot, um, this may be something many of you know that I use a 3D mouse and this process can be very, very finicky. And this is where a 3D mouse comes into play and really simplifies the process. If you do have access to a 3D mouse, this will simplify the process. Um, simple reason being, the 3D mouse gives you much more granular control. It's a lot smaller moves to get things lined up. And it's not quite as painful to move those lines around and get that set so everything lines up near perfect. So there you go. That gives you an idea of just what that process looks like to get those lines lined up. Hopefully if you're in a situation like this, especially with a render or a photograph, you actually save your scene and can just export the photo, export the image, get it all lined up real quick and easy. If not, you can use those four commands, field of view, orbit, scale, and pan, to line an image up. Once this is all lined up, I'd want to come into my watermark again, remove my watermark, and now I have that image that I could export. So here's where I could go in and say, I just want to export line work or whatever, but that I could overlay and composite on top of the original image. So hopefully that's going to help you. Hopefully you learned a trick or two, hopefully something that works into your workflow. If so, go ahead and give us a like down below and subscribe. That way you'll know when the next Skill Builder video comes out. Most importantly, leave us a comment. We like making these videos, but like it a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.